Daniel is a toe. Congratulations. I've never seen a big toe with such fine mustachery. So. <laughs> That's the start of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> How was your time over the Black? How was your night recording with the Black Tower podcast? Well, they called me a big toe, but they complimented the mustache. So, uh, I only want the guys to fall off a cliff a little bit, just twenty foot, twenty foot cliff. That's only like two d six or yeah, no, one d six fall damage. Yeah. No, one one d six fall damage. But, guys, yeah, no, today's glass no comes playing. from the Trader's Tree. Used a little bit of the power to seal up the edges and uh, polished it up real nice. And uh, I got a uh, skull. This was, uh, he was actually a dedicated when he left. I don't know why he left. It's just. Is your video share working? But now. Uh, not at the moment. Oh. What? I don't think your, your video, video share, share is off. not working, Josh. Oh, I'm trying to get it up. I'm trying to get it up. My. Internet's you know, they make a pill for that. I don't know what's going on with it. The amount Ayo. of times that he has said that in his life, very high. Let me turn off my VPN real quick. Mm. So good. It always annoys the shit out of me when you do that. <sighs> okay. Somebody's got to clean that no, up. And I know that it's just future you, and you're not being very nice to Karen. <laughs> <laughs> But speaking of people that aren't nice to the future us is welcome to another episode of the Black Tower Podcast, recorded for your tainty enjoyment and the enjoyment of your taint every Tuesday. And we do many other <laughs> things that start with the letter T. Like that's true. Titillate your. I'm not going to go any further because this is like early part of the recording where YouTube algorithms still. Work <laughs> and I need to do better about remember that. Anyway. We are glad to have you all here again. If you're listening to this live, make sure you clear your schedule for Sunday. And if you want to know what for, head to our YouTube channel. Sunday, 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 Sunday! So we're going to be doing the right. uh, drafting session for the Wheel of Time Season 2 TV show Fantasy Draft. And you will get to meet and see all the teams and hear all the rules and how things are going to go and flow. And you'll get to watch us all make both brilliant and horrible decisions. Uh, and you will mm -hmm. all be relieved to know for the sake of Black Tower Podcast, because we know y'all are all absolutely rooting for us to win, uh, that I am not making the decisions unilaterally <laughs> or by myself. Correct. Um, which Correct. may or may not have already proved to be a good idea, because I definitely was going to put somebody in my top six that I have now realized probably not the best idea for... At least the first like couple episodes. We'll see. It's extra fun because this first round draft, we have to pick uh, our teams for the first three episodes. And after that, we get to edit it per episode to a degree. So mm -hmm. uh, make sure you tune in for that live stream to enjoy more of that. And you will see all three of us there. And so you know who us are be. I am your Bajan Mahil, Andrew. Us RB, I like that. Yeah. I am your Amon Khan Mahale, Daniel, as I try and figure out what Andrew just said in Southern for my Yankee brain. Yeah, see, that's what we do whenever <laughs> we can't think of a basic segue because I'm like, oh, we should do the intro to actually introduce ourselves. So I just say words <laughs> and eventually it works. I like your word. You got some fancy words, magic man. <laughs> I, you know what? I am the sucky internet, Mihail. I am sorry, guys. I am Apparently. trying to get the live Jesus. video going, and I'm running pixelated, and I'm running. I might. Oh, this is. Are you still using the speed test me. running on the stream deck trick? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, it just says running speed test. Yeah. Oh, it's just been stuck. They got wise to me. Oh. Yeah. Well, Spectrum can get wise to me if they want, because I guess what I got in the mail the other day, the oh. offers to sign up early for MetroNet, which is the new fiber internet company coming in, 
Um, hey, so nice. when Spectrum told me, we're going to give you symmetric speeds at the new place and then lied, and I knew they lied because I got here and it was all coax and you can't do symmetric over coax. Symmetric over copper doesn't work um, unless you have two copper lines that run uh, in duplex. Um, fancy internet words. Uh, so when the fiber gets I here... I like your fancy words, magic man. When the fiber gets here, I'll have symmetric... Which means if I pay for 500 megs, I will get 500 megs download and 500 megs upload because you can do that with fiber. Uh, and it's mm -hmm. fantastic. Um, so Josh, maybe maybe Metron will make their way out to Utah or, or something like that. A competitor, the internet market is one of the markets that absolutely need a competitor to drive. It's not really as much about price, though that is a nice side effect, but mainly quality of service. Sure. Mm -hmm. That's it. Because if your Preach. shit's always going down, spectrum, <clears throat> spectrum. <clears throat> ah, got it. I did it. Hey, I got it. We're up. She did the thing. We're doing it. Okay, it's a Black Tar podcast. Yes. And when you're what feeling is, down, is there a filter over it? What? Yeah, I'm just... taking it off right it's now. Right. Why are you calling? No. Trying to call me out. No, I was just very confused. I was like, <laughs> did I do something and I don't see it? Now they can see us. Now they can see that I'm drinking out of the skull of my enemies. Welcome to Will of Time. That I got from Target. Edition, AKA Tech Edition. When you are feeling down, when you're feeling unenergetic, lethargic, slow. Unergetic? Weak, Go to w.gg and change all those frowns upside down. Your friends with the energy powder and the big anime titties. That's right. The W. That's what's in here. It's the Dragonade. And it tastes like uh, Smarties. I thought you were going to say there's big anime titties in your cup. Oh, no. It's, uh, it's definitely not that. <laughs> I was like, wow, like you really dove head first into watching an anime, huh? Well done. I didn't even know you were starting. No, I definitely did not. That did not happen. So go to W, yeah. uh, you type in their shop code BTP and get 10% off and uh, say, the Black Tower sends their regards. And then fail fire. That's what we do. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty cool. They're pretty good. All the energy without any of the crash. Um, it's really good stuff. We wouldn't recommend it if we didn't try it and uh, think and think that it worked that out well true. for us. And it's not just because Josh and I lived for a fair portion of our life off of uh, caffeine because no sleep nights and military does that. Um, Daniel approves of it too, <laughs> who has also done say. the very sleepless nights in the need of caffeine, but hopefully mm -hmm. with less of the a uh, horrible, horrible humor that is not has no place out in the civilian world, and less back problems. Hopefully, that's what I hope for you. And two knees I that still bend. Do think I have less back problems, but you know the humor thing. I definitely have the humor. You've been with us for four years. If nothing else, we've <laughs> the humor thing. I got it down. I got it down. How do I get the humor without the pain, Dick? I'm sorry. Uh, hey, hang out you. with veterans without being <laughs> one. <laughs> Or work it work in the service. <laughs> well, that's shit. all. Yeah, that that's really yeah. the answer. You get the humor without the back pain, but I don't know. Like, I, which I've done yeah. both of those. In this uh, case, I am the bridge that unites us. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> Anyway, we are here again <laughs> to talk about the Wheel of Time. There's that humor. Yeah. <laughs> talk about the Wheel of Time. Oh, man. That uh, was great. So, as all most of our episodes are, this one is going to be a full spoiler discussion. So, we're going to go ahead and lay on spoiler. that spoiler warning so that you're all nice and snugly protected right next to a, a definitely protection. not suspicious barrel of wine. <laughs> The Black Tower stands fully erect. 
When the tower is bulging at full erectness, you must protect yourself from tainty spoilers. Your spoiler condom must cover the immense girthiness of all 14 books of Robert Jordan's The Wheel of Time. With an itty bitty tip at the top for the prequel New Spring. If your condom is too Proper small, you will get tainty spoilerages all up in your eye. Or ears. You, you have, have been, been warned. warned. You know, that might be a better PSA on the proper application of a prophylactic than, like, you see in school or anywhere else. And I don't know why I used the big word for condom there. It just seemed like it fit I mean, well. Yeah. <laughs> so, in addition to a spoiler warning, uh, in case you haven't listened to us before, and I don't know how this wound up being your first episode, but thanks for listening. If you haven't figured it out already, um... We are not known for being family friendly or PG <laughs> or even PG thirteen. So, uh, surprise! If you happen to be, I don't know, sitting for teenagers or children, and now you have a lot of explaining to do once their parents return, you're welcome. Lucy, you've got some explaining to do. It's a good bargaining chip. You're like, look, if you want me to watch your kids and not expose them to the taint in Black Tower podcast, you're going to have to pay me like at least another five bucks a night. <laughs> and then when you get the extra five bucks, you cut us in for at least a dollar a month and you join the Patreon so you can listen live. See? See how it works there? It sounds like suspiciously like, like a Black Tower pyramid scream. scheme. Not scream. It's Black Tower pyramid scream. scream. Welcome to the Black Pyramid. Oh. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> That's our uh, our welcome to the Black outpost. Parade. It's our Sarin outpost. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> yeah. But speaking of things that will make you scream, what are we talking about tonight, Josh? When I was a soldier, oh. I ran to Look. the into the tower. <laughs> to join the Ashaman. Uh, he said, son, no, will not... you look in to my hands and focus on the fire like nothing else exists? That's it right there. You know, even the coats. Um, from... No, tonight we're going to talk about something been, so. that we love talking about. We love. You know, some people say, let's talk turkey. That's not what we say at the Black Tower. At the Black Tower, we say, let's talk taint. Now, I can already hear you, you guys. Oh, God, room? they're talking about taint again. We love taint. We love talking about taint. But we've discovered something about the taint. And it needs to be discussed. And as we I are subject matter experts. Reason. So I've learned new things. On all things taint. <laughs> It is time for us to discuss this. What is the depth of saturation with the taint? Is the taint something? Because as we know, channeling is not just bound to the body. Channeling is bound to the body and to the soul, right? There are different, different pieces of each aspect. Disparate. That allow someone to channel. Okay? Now, when you channel, it is because the physical and the spirit are in harmony. Channeling the powers of the universe. The one power. Who's harmony? So, when someone channels tainted Sidene, we know that the taint flows through the body. But does the taint stick to the body or to the soul and why like like explain yourself do not just say body sh show over because yeah no no and i'm not gonna accept well naive pulled black tar barbs out of dude's brains so it's obviously physical is it is so, it let me start by positing this and I'm going to use uh, burning out or or self-stilling or just completely burning yourself up um, as apparently can happen. Uh, I've never... Well, no. Well, we do see it in the books. Never mind. Try um, for the burninator. <laughs> when you pull far too much, 
of the one power, regardless of it's Sidene or Side Air. Right. Burn out. And it seems that that can go as far as to being like a physical thing where you literally burn up. So it would seem then that channeling has the potential or, or does to some degree flow through your actual body and interact with your actual body. Cause so it, it, you potentially can burn up. It heightens all of your senses. The more of it that you have, the more heightened your senses are um, things like that. <laughs> so if it kind of actually touches and interacts with your physical body and the taint rides on that sweet, sweet goodness, I imagine that it would touch anything that the one power itself touches as well. Including your body. Including your bowed. Um, I will say this. I will say this because you've got... Well, well, they've done... Okay, just to bring it into the real world. They've done study after study after study that shows your mental state can affect and does affect your physical state in a very real way. If you are sad, if you are depressed, if you are stressed is the one of the big ones. If you're experiencing a lot of stress, you are much more likely to get sick. You are much more likely to get injured. You are much more likely to get serious injury. Physically speaking, physically, if you're not reasonably healthy, if you are, you know, not taking care of yourself, it will affect your mental state as well. So mental and physical are connected, completely connected. So when someone channels, you have another aspect of this as well, where it's mental and physical that are completely connected. The taint comes in. And I think, I think we can make a case either way. Like the taint stays on you physically, affects you mentally. The taint stays on you mentally, affects you physically. Which, or is there like a third piece of this that we're not picking up on? So I was actually going to go ahead and, and kind of come in on, on that one just a little bit. Um, because my thought on this is very much that... So, okay, two things. Andrew, I am not saying that you are wrong because I <laughs> don't actually know these books super well. I mean, I've read them a number of times, but I don't actually know them back to front every word. I do not actually remember anyone getting hurt physically from burning out. Um, but that just may be me not remembering. Obviously, in the television show, those motherfucking women burned oh. from the inside. Uh, but Agamor. I personally do not remember anyone actually getting oh. hurt. Agnor. Yeah, he did, in, in, yeah, Agnor, whenever he pulls from the the, pull, the pure pull and tries to wrestle it from Rand, he, he physically burns up into a pile of ash. Hmm, that is a fair point. Unless I remember, I was also going to say secondarily, here. and this answers both of these questions in some ways, uh, that particular instance, because I will also say I don't ever remember an example of a man burning out in the series. Um, I know that it's strongly suggested that it's possible, and I'm not actually suggesting mm -hmm. that it's not possible for men to burn out. I know that it is. But I don't actually remember an on-page example of someone burning out other than the one that you just reminded me of, which is Agonor at the beginning of uh, The Eye of the World. Um, what I was going to say here is that it also feels like uh, the... The manifestation of what Nynaeve sees when she's healing people and delving men of the madness i it is hard for me to determine whether it's allegorical or actual mm. because she is delving them with magic so presumably laws of physics need not apply given that 
there's channeling involved, given that there's power involved. And so presumably, again, oh. it's not strongly suggested one way or the other in some ways that, the, you know, the one power can or cannot affect the soul. And therefore, when she's delving their bodies, there's no good reason to me that those black tar entities aren't on their souls and that's what she's actually stripping it off of uh though again i will definitely say i think that the taint does sit in both places i absolutely think that it affects your soul um though i also think that we've talked about it before and i really like the idea of your soul being washed of the taint when it goes back into the pool of souls effectively you lose all your memory not all of them necessarily because of course rand has his from loose theron and and there are certain exceptions but you lose all of the memories your soul loses all of its memories it loses all of its taint it loses you know this that and the other thing um and then comes out fresh when you, when it comes back around to another body um but i do actually think that it sits on the soul as well that that is why the taint is so dangerous. And it's one of the reasons why um, Moradin, for example, as Ishamayel, I think uses the true power a bit and then dies and comes back as Moradin and his eyes are all fucked up now because he, he still has the effects of uh controlling the true power with right uh, from his old life because of course it's this like bastardized the dark one grabs your soul before it goes into the pool and puts it into a new body and whatnot so before it can actually be sort of washed clean of these things it is placed back into a new body which is why he remembers everything why he has all of that stuff and why his eyes are still fucky because of course it lies on the soul as well as the body. Though personally, I am going to say that I think the taint lies more on the physical than so, it does on the soul. Yeah. So you're you're talking about the saw um, from using the the true power. Correct. Which is a different thing. It's not yeah, direct, no. but it's similar to me. Well, that's that's not the uh, that's not necessarily where I was going. I just liked the name, like sure. oh, saw, dude. Like, how'd you know I could touch the saw? It's a saw, dude. <laughs> um, so, in Crown of Swords, um, is kind of where we get a lot of the references that more specifically talk about Morden and the saw. Um, and they, they give us more like visual uh, kind of descriptions of it. And generally, it's uh, just described as tiny black flecks, just large enough to see, floating across. Mm -hmm. um, one like the the first uh entry is like uh across his blue eyes first one then the other like in a straight line um but what he had already was uh and the, the the quote is this morden had tapped into the true power and more than once much more dot 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 she had not expected the great lord to allow allow one that particular honor um mm-hmm and I believe that we, it's, it's whatever this mysterious watcher was. It was watching Samuel and Grendel. Uh, well, actually, no, that was already happening. But then um, in uh, five chapters before the one uh, that I just pulled the previous quote from, uh, he talks about the black flecks filled his eyes, a horizontal blizzard. Uh, so that's more than watching uh, Samuel and Grendel spread chaos um, through an agreement with the Shido. Um, and then Mogidian notices a single fleck whenever she meets him. I was always, uh, I'm talking about like where we see this stuff because I was always, always under the impression that he didn't have any saw as Ishmael, that he only had them as Morden. And it was only right. after his rebirth as Morden and his, and his proving of how hard he was fighting against Luz Theron that he was granted actual access into the true power. In that, and because he had it, and it was so so much more addicting than Sidene, and he no longer has uh, a filter to protect him from any of the ill effects. 
that Morden was just like, and we see him do this throughout the rest of the series from the from the first time we see him use the true power. That he just uses it for everything. Like, oh, what's that? A single hair is out of place? True power it back in this place. <laughs> so I always thought that it was after his resurrection uh, by the Dark One. I didn't know or think that he had, uh, that Ishmael had any of the saw. And I will say, it is not ever stated that Ishamael has any of this on his eyes. It is not something that anyone notices when he is Ishamael. But I have always posited 100%. Mm. And this is an opinion. It is. Mm. Because there's no evidence towards it necessarily, but there's also no evidence against it earlier. Because just mm. because it's not stated that there was saw in his eyes does not mean there wasn't. It just means that it wasn't stated. Um my position is that actually channeling to uh th this is what i was going to mention um most of when we see a shamael is actually when he's playing balzaman and in my opinion i think that channeling balzaman is actually him channeling the true source and so he just hides his saw-filled eyes by making them not exist. Like, to the observer, he's just Balzaman and his eyes are on fire. And you can't see the saw if my eyes are just always on fire. Like, yeah. And so that has always been my position about it. Uh, again, whether it is correct or not, hard to say. Robert Jordan is not here to ask, and... Wow. I don't believe that he was necessarily asked any in an interview. I am sure that Morshadi will show me if I'm wrong. We will see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Morshadi's well, fingers are like furiously typing yeah. right now. Well, and, and more it. to to you to add uh, to bolster. Oh uh, shit! Your thought is that I uh, believe the prevailing theory, if not confirmed by RJ, was that the healing that Ishmael does on Luz Theron is with the true power. Also true. Yeah. Yeah. So that would mean that he had it at least at least from the time of the board. Um, and that would make sense. So yeah, you would, you would want to one. cover that up because if you're just walking around normal people that don't know what this is and they see that you've got like black dots floating black across your eyes, eyes yeah. they're probably going to be like, uh, I've read enough uh, horror tales to know that uh, you're not a good guy. Though I'm not sure that so flaming right eyes makes you look any better, but... Yeah, no. Well, and interesting, so uh, fucking Morshadi, of course, just posted a thing here that said, uh, Harry, uh, sorry, Woodson, I think it was the chapter when Morden was observing with the Cloak of Fan Cloak, his vision was blurred by a rain of black spots, Harriet, but it didn't affect his vision, Robert, it didn't affect his vision, you're aware of it, but it's not like there is blackness between you, because it gets thicker and thicker and thicker. And you get to the point where if you've used it long enough, you get a steady stream, even if you're not connected. And you are then on the road at that point, inevitably, to becoming what Ishamael was. Because these are stigmata, if you will. These sa are stigmata caused by a linkage to the Dark One. And eventually, the effect is to become all fire eyes. Oh. You no longer have eyes visible to other people. If they're looking into your eyes, they see they seem to be looking into caverns of flame that stretch to infinity. What? And when you open your mouth, they see another cavern of flame that stretches to infinity. Because you've reached at what? that point the ultimate level of this usage, and quite possibly, if you've at this point not been granted immortality, you're on your way to death. Not madness, but you're on your way to death. So the fact that Morden doesn't have fire eyes means that the Dark One, whenever he resurrected him, reset his usage. I So that one, again, I think is questionable as to what that means. Because, again, what of it was a choice and what wasn't? Because, of course, again, it's, it's the idea of how much can Mask of Mirrors do and how much is just a thing that is going to be happening when you've touched the true power enough. Because... Well, it, it's now it's not stated as to whether you can emulate that effect other ways. So it's possible that just Ishamael just touched the true power a shit ton. And the reason that he pretends to be a Balzaman or part of the reason that it works is because his eyes are gone. It's well, also and... possible that Ishamael knows that this thing is true and therefore emulates it with something else to get that effect because he knows that that will be the most uh, effective visual 
to go I, ahead and communicate what he's trying to do. So it's not really distinctly stated as to whether it's a choice or an effect. I, I don't think it's an effect. I don't think it's a choice. I think he has been alive for 3,000 years working his will. And that can and give you such a crick in the neck. <laughs> And the best way to not be detected ever is to use the true source. And he can do whatever the hell he wants. Nobody's going to notice gateways. Nobody's going to notice fireball weaves. Nobody's going to notice air weaves. Nobody's going to notice anything. And 3,000 years of using that power, you're going to have what? fire eyes. What if... So this is a, another random thought. What if the entirety yep. of the reason why Ishii can come out every, every uh, what is it? Every sixty years for forty years, or forty years yeah. out of every hundred. So every sixty years he can come out for forty yeah, years. Yeah, whatever. Is because he yep. was already holding the true power when he was sealed, <laughs> so he could Ooh. use it to shield himself from the boar to an extent. So he has a built-in out. And it would Dude, be there are so the many good Dude, theories he of why Ishamaya gets to do that. He, he imprisoned himself in a prison, in a prison, but he also has like a three day. Oh. But anyway, I I agree. There There is nothing to say whether or not he's doing this for like effect or to intimidate the other uh, chosen. I don't know why I would, because all the other Chosen are, are currently sealed away, so they can't see what's going on anyway. That's my big thing, is like the whole why other, unless he's appearing to people all over the place and using it to make them think that, you know, uh, Satan is real, the end is nigh. Uh, I could see that for sure. I read it in the, now that this, because I never knew any, I never knew this shit at all. I didn't know there was like, at the end, your shit's just on fire. You got like gonorrhea of the eyes and mouth. <laughs> use the true power too much. Um, for me, gonorrhea, I, if you will. Yeah, gonorrhea. gonorrhea. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. But, I apologize. For that. No, that was good. Um, I read it as um, that he got reset in this whenever he got re uh, resurrected. Um, that's fair. And in part, I'm going to absolutely fully admit. Sure, new body. And I like that because that Who points that points to some of the the potentially tainting effects that do stem directly from the Dark One linger. If that is what happened, if Morden's body got reset in Resurrection or issue into his new body, then that would point to a lot of the Dark One's influence and taint, like the taint, like the saw, lying more so in the physical body than it does on the soul. Or the Dark One can okay, squeeze talk, you the soul. But me, I so I, I'm that was what there. I was going to say. I think, a little bit. But I don't I think, think, I don't I think, think the, the Dark One can squeeze you the soul. I, I think the consequences well, he might be able are to squeeze you the, the soul of his influence. I'm sorry. One more time. Yeah, Daniel, I apologize. And then Josh Go goes. ahead, Josh. Or that way. That way works. <laughs> um, I was just going to say, I, I agree that the, the true source seems to manifest the its presence physically. And it would make sense that it's a different sort of effect than the taint, because the taint is something the Dark One did in Backlash as an attack. Mm. We know that the ability to channel is both is it, the ability to channel is physical. The intensity with which one may channel is spiritual. Okay? Like we've established that prior in prior episodes. Mm -hmm. So the taint, I, I'm going to say that the taint on Sidene actually affects the spiritual more than the physical because if it affected the physical you would possibly lose your ability to channel it would it would affect your ability to channel and the only effect that is happening on someone's ability to channel that i can see is uh 
like consequences when you channel, right? So someone starts channeling and immediately you get paranoid. The shadows are reaching out for you. They're coming to get you. Um, immediately you start channeling. But it doesn't change the fact that you can channel. It affects how well you can channel. And I think that's sort of my argument for why the taint resides in the soul. And as well as that, just to kind of further that point, when Nynaeve does eventually heal that, she's able to heal it in some cases... Not in every case. I mean, very and specifically, she not uses, the land case. And she uses a very similar sort of weave that she does when she heals Loghain. And so, and which we also know to be a more spiritual severance. Do we? Yes. Yeah, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I, I I disagree. I see what you're doing. See what you're talking about there. I I always felt that it was more like soul uh, soul based. Um, which uh, for me that stems back to like our whole discussion on like what does it take. So I think you can cut off the the physical ability to do it, and then but the soul remembers how to do it, and that's why you can still feel it. I don't know. But that's neither here nor there. Um, that is true. I mean, so, yes, she can heal it in some instances and in others she has a harder time or can't. Like, so Rand, she can't. And it's not because she can't see it or access it. It's because it's too intricately entwined. Um, and I believe... That is her her stated yeah. reason. She's like, yeah, she's like, it's just simply far too complex for me to be able to do. Um, but this, I believe, this would take a surgeon more skilled than I, effectively. Yeah. But I believe at the point where she looks into <laughs> his madness, this it. is this is after he's turned or returned from. Uh, I'm about to destroy all the creation. Jk, not gonna do that moment on Dragon Mount, and she notes that there's almost <laughs> like a barrier between it and his brain. Because unless I remember wrong, which is more than possible. Yes, it has happened on many occasions. She always references it being like spikes into the brain, much right. in, much in the same way that compulsion compulsion seems to sit on the brain. Right. So, I mean, taking taking from the true power example, uh, and going with my albeit assumption that the saw and everything remains present in the body, not the soul. I, I think that that is what the dark ones taint and influence would do perpetually. I think it lives in the body. Uh, because if you have the power to capture souls as they die and put them in new bodies, and you can do that to reset them to how they were taint or untainted wise beforehand, then why would you ever attach something to the soul whenever you could just, okay, you're too crazy or you're too far gone. I'm going to pull you out of this body, put you in a new one, and you'll be uh, a lot saner of a person or free of the saw. Um, you'll be right as rain. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there was something else I was thinking about in there, and I lost it midway through my own thought, so that's always fun. Damn it. You know, that's how I know it was right, because it couldn't have been a lie, because they say you never forget a lie. So. Wait, what? Um, it was oh something. I'm sorry. What were you saying? <laughs> Forgot. Uh no, that's that's what I'm trying to remember. Like I had another thought, and it, I like I remember thinking like, oh, this is a really good thought. I better not forget it, and then I promptly forgot it. <laughs> so, hmm. Oh god, I'm trying to think. Like, I can't remember. Maybe I'll remember eventually, but at this at this point in time, I can't. But. No, I, th I think I'm going to stick firmly in the uh, it's tied to uh, tied to the body. Um, yeah, just because the way Nynaeve like, uh, describes getting rid of it, she describes pulling it from the brain, um, which earnestly could just be uh, tied into like their interpretation of the soul. It's definitely possible to remember to interpret the soul as being part of the brain. Um, given the nature of the Wheel of Time, I don't think that's what they would think. I, I believe that if they were going to interpret the soul, they would interpret it as being uh, somewhere in the chest. But then you also have the whole thing about the water bond, and that uh, ties to the soul, and that also fall, well, 
that falls around the outside and settles into the body. Um, Say it with your chest. Yeah. They don't really ever talk about it, like settling around the brain uh, like they do compulsion or uh, uh, the taint once Nynaeve figures out how to look that thing in the eye. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm I'm firmly I'm firmly in the tainted body camp right now. Tainted all right. body over t- so so do you think the taint affects the spirit at all? Or is it solely through the body that the taint I think it only affects the body known on the soul. I think it only affects the body. So because uh one of the things you pointed out earlier about you know, your, your mental state can affect your physical state and vice versa. Um, the, the core way that your mental state affects your physical state is uh, by straining the brain and prompting the brain to produce more or less of certain chemicals um, in the brain, um, generally causing chemical imbalances that can cause imbalances throughout the entire body. I mean, it is literally the, the control center for the body. Um, right. So, uh, like, uh so everything that we do, everything that uh, we like, oh, I enjoy doing that, I enjoy doing this, or I don't like doing that, is boiled down to biology is by like the chemical responses our brain gives us when we do it. Um, so like solving puzzles or finishing a task or making progress or you know, feeling doing something that, that is rewarding, your brain rewards you with a hit of dopamine. And so your body goes, I like that shit, give me more. Um, so that's how all that works. So, it's, it, but the the mental state of how you're feeling about it, and this is why, like, uh, depression, for example, is treated with um, uh, SRIs or uh, what is it like serotonin receptor inhibitors or selective receptor inhib- inhibitors, whatever it stands for. I take the fucking meds. I should know what they do, but I take the, <laughs> I take the happy pill. I don't feel as bad. That's all that fucking matters. But it it inhibits I the certain fantastic. receptors in your brain from from accepting the I don't feel so happy chemicals. And by extension, you either kind of neutral out a little bit more or your brain has a better chance of absorbing the I feel good or feel better chemicals. Um. And I think the, the taint works with the same way. I think it fucks with the, the chemical balances in the brain of people that are going through it. Because um, one of the earlier things that Morshadi posted up was that from the moment a, a man or anybody that can channel Sidene channels it, even if they only channel it once and never again, they will die from the, I think they called it the wasting sickness. Well, they mm-hmm. will die from the effects of the taint, even if they never channel ever again. It's going to rain. And to me, uh, and even with um, even with the true power talking about people dying um, by using it too much or whatever the case is, it, it seems more so like that is tied to like a physical death, not like the death of the soul. So there's my very long-winded explanation about depression medication and why I think, <laughs> why I think, therefore I am. No, why I think the taints in the in the body. I don't know. Very long-winded answer to your question. I like it. No, it's it's good. I, look, it's it's we're doing what we always do, which is find a subject that really doesn't have a clear answer and chewing into it because then we can't be wrong. It's it. <laughs> That's the true genius of the show. Um, but no, but the, 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 we're talking about the the relationship between mental and physical. Ultimately, is what we're talking about. We're talking about the Robert Jordan used the taint as sort of an allegory for trauma, and you have people who suffer trauma through no fault of their own trauma happens to them and they have to figure out how to deal with it. That's just, that's, you know, it's not fair. It's not cool. It's not okay. It's just how it is. And which, which also explains why some men or some people who channel Sidene can stave off the madness longer than others. And it's it's not to it's not to speak ill of someone 
it's not to say, well, this person is is weak and that's why they couldn't hang it. Nobody's ever going to say that. Nobody's ever going to to judge your ability to handle trauma. Um, or they shouldn't. But at the Black Tower, it is very well known that. I mean, you've got you've got Andral, whom we love. We love Andral, and he is deeply affected by the taint. We've got uh, Jahar Narishma, also affected by the taint. Um, I believe he's the one that Nynaeve heals, right? I'd have to look it up. I cannot remember. Uh, Narishma is one of naive. the ones that right. she heals, but it's not Rashadi the stated one. Rashadi says naive. Naive. Yeah, naive. That's right. Naive. Naive. The, yeah. I don't know why I like put a little chick over the E and was just like, naive. 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 It's, it's like because everything in these books is like that. Oh, what's your name? My name is spelled T-A-I-M. Oh, your name is Tame? No, it's Taim. Ah. Oh. Hello, how do you spell your name? Well, F-A-I-L-T. he's very untamed. Ah, so your name is Faili? No, my name is Fail. No, it's Fail. <laughs> it's fail. hard. Fail! In Korean, it's Shilpe. Um, <laughs> all right. Love it. No, I, I... I almost wonder if there is sort of a hybrid effect to this um and what do you mean by that brother josh um, um it's coalescing in my mind because i'm just thinking i'm thinking about what andrew said about affecting the physical um and really my only sort of thought my only bit of what i would call you know circumspect evidence to that would be that every m- man in the throes of madness can still channel except for, and I'm thinking about it just now, except for the ones who are really saturated with taint. They they lose their ability to channel, but we don't know if they lose their ability to channel because they physically can't do it anymore, or if they lose their ability to channel because mentally they're not capable enough to go through the mental exercises to see Sidene and wield it. Well, channeling requires, even regardless of how you seize it, a fair amount of mental faculty. Right. So I, I think, um, so just like a disease that um, that slowly like erodes your like fine motor control, uh, like terrible diseases uh, like uh, what Parkinson's, um, muscular dystrophy, things like that, that slowly erode or alter. Um, the, the fine motor control and the different like kind of motor controls that you have um, erode your muscles, if you will. I would imagine that the madness and the effects it has um, erodes your your one power muscles. You know, your, your, your brain. Because it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I think it just causes the decline. Because I mean, if you're if you're so far gone that like every shadow you see is like every person that you ever did or didn't know that died, um, and, and all this crazy stuff is going on, and all of this is happening continuously, and you're that far gone, there's I don't think you can have uh, the mental faculties to knowingly control what you're doing with the one power, which I think also helps explain why during the breaking people went so wild with what they were doing. Well, yeah, there, I mean, there's got to be. Well, and we also talk about the wasting sickness. You know, they, they channel once, they get taint in there, and it sits in their body just slowly poisoning them. It's like it's like arsenic or uh, uh, asbestos. <laughs> and it just slowly, they waste away yeah, until eventually they are. Uh-huh, uh-huh, <laughs> got them. Uh-huh. That's your that's your southern jargon for the day. If you didn't know, <laughs> you're asbestos. Asbestos. Well, you know, but it's just yeah. That's 
that's a really interesting breakdown there because you know I'm, I'm starting to lean more and more towards a hybrid sort of effect you 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 channel it in and when when you channel it's your your body mind and spirit sort of or acting in harmony right and yeah so it would make sense that your body mind and spirit body and spirit are equally open to the effects of the taint on Sidene. So, and, and, and as we know, it does have both physical and mental manifestations. Yeah. So whenever, when Nynaeve is delving ran and she finds the taint in its Weird, she can't explain it, protective cocoon of extreme knotted upness. Like every kitten in existence got together and played with this ball right, of yarn right. and just like plopped it on Rand's brain. Uh, but luckily, it was in a condom or, you know, plastic wrap or something like that. Sanitary <laughs> plastic wrap. Now, um, she kind of describes it as it's been compartmentalized away from him by way of that kind of protective covering. Do we think that it was kind of like physically, so seriously, if we're going to say the taint, or if I'm going to say, um, here I go attacking my own point. Um, <laughs> if we're going to say the taint resides physically in the body um, or affects directly the physical body, um, then if you're going to seal it away, there has to be something physical to it. Um, it has to be an actual thing. And it, in part, seems like it is because Nynaeve can touch it with the one power. And I believe she says, like, as she tried to delve further into it, that the, the kind of coating or covering around it just absorbed everything she tried to touch it with. It just pulled it all in. Um, okay. Which... Isn't there? There's other stuff we see do that. Like, like uh, I know Quindiar does that. That all the force that goes into it to try to break it absorbs it all. True. Um, I don't know. Do it's we like see the, any the mutant bishop? Yeah. Or vibranium. True. This is true. <laughs> There is the Wheel of Time Marvel crossover. There it is! So, with that, other interesting question about where does this shit sit. Um, Rand and Morden switch fucking bodies. Morden's body's been super mm -hmm. fucked by the saw. Ooh. If it is attached physically to the body, like I am assuming, Rand should be seeing spots. He, well, so, it does say that it doesn't affect your vision. So other people should be yeah. seeing spots in his eyes, but well, he should not be seeing spots. But yes, you Hold are correct. Though. He has something you're unique. aware of them, so it, which I think means like you can makes me think of fucking floaters. You ever get the floaters in your eyes? Yes, yep, hundred percent. And then you look yep. at them, and that's they run what away. I think of every look, goddamn look. time. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> look. So these are just like like a nineteen ninety eight Windows like screensaver. Just <laughs> me. look, Ranadin, we're. Forgetting, Ranadin has one very unique thing about his eyes. Oh God, I thought that was a misspeak for a bit there. I was like, nope, oh. nope. It's their, right. it's their celebrity right. couple name. Fair enough. Because I'm sorry, Randon Morden, totes in love. I mean, they Don't say when you mate, you become one, and there's no, not much not. more becoming one than you can do with that, I guess. So, look, one of his eyes are the black and white symbol, ancient symbol of the Aes Sedai. Right. What? What? Ranadin. Is one of his eyes not the symbol, the ancient symbol of the Aes Sedai? Moradin? No, I don't believe so. A after the last battle, when Rand's body dies and Moradin's soul I know. dies, I'm here. He you. wakes up, he looks in the mirror, and I think it's his left eye, which is a callback to Odin. They already have their callback to Odin and Matt. Get Shush. out of here. Stop doing too many callbacks to Odin. Robert. There are never too many callbacks to Odin. 
No, but he he has something truly unique, and that is, I believe that the effect on his body is the same effect of the seal, which is a perfect seal. So in that process, because remember, Rand's soul is traversing into another body. So in that process, he's using Sidar, Sidine, and the true source to create a perfect bridge or a perfect seal. And in that would potentially have healed. Bam! God, I'm good. So fucking smart. You guys need to get on my level. Daniel, earlier you were like, I don't know everything about these books. Guess what? I do, motherfucker. <laughs> do you, though? I'm just kidding. Oh, so cool. it was the dragon's fang. So it was. It sorry. was. It wasn't the I was, actual. I was looking this up. If, if you've already answered this, I am sorry because I was like trying to find it while you're. No, you're good. Talking. Yeah. So uh, together with Morden's body, he inherits one motionless saw in the shape of the dragon's fang in his eye. I think it's that just like a Naruto with the Sharingan. I think it's like just a single tome. It's just hanging out there. It's one little, one little comma. One, not an Oxford comma, but like just one, one regular apostrophe. <laughs> no, I would argue that it is an Oxford comma like, because it is not like Whatever necessary. he sees, it's, it's an apostrophe over his pupil. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna go with the grammar way. jokes. Y'all like didn't know we was gonna get some intelligent humor up in this bitch, did you? Uh, 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 an apostrophe, because then whatever what he sees there and is yet. his. <laughs> everything the light touches will be. His. Yeah, grammar everything Nazis. Don't hang around the black tower. We got grammar, motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to hang around us. You can hang around these nuts. <laughs> you can't deny these nuts. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, that that actually brings a up brief. a perfect bridge between what we were talking about before, with the saw versus the taint, because mm -hmm. the saw we know has an av adverse physical effect on the body, but it is separate from the taint because it does not, so far as we know, drive the person mentally insane. Well, what is what is the distinct I, difference you're, between you're the taint making and the specific... true power? The Dark One grants you willingly access to the true power. Right. The sort taint of. is his retaliation yeah, sort of. against well, any man who dares channel without channeling for him. Because he filters, he filters out his own taint, giggity or not giggity, I don't know. Just responsible, <laughs> responsible taintentry, like husbandry of animals, but taintentry. He filters it out for all of his followers before before it reaches them. Which then begs the question: How does he intercede the flow of a power that doesn't intrinsically come to him? before it goes to them. Okay, so I'm actually going to... So... <laughs> Daniel's head is hurting. <laughs> God, there are three things that I have floating around in here, and none of them are... Are saw. they saw? No, one of them is <laughs> saw related. Uh... So really, the, the thing is that I feel like the true, the effects of the saw and the effects of the taint, or I should say the effects of the taint and the saw, I feel like are actually kind of two sides of the same coin. Because again, the true power is poison to humans. Unless the, the... Well, no, the, the true power is just poison to humans, period. That's that's the statement. Hard stop. The Dark One has to allow you to do it unless you're Rand and you have Kalendor and you're pulling it out of Moradin because he's using the back door built into Kalendor to pull it out of Moradin who has been allowed to use it by the Dark One. This is the worst so fucking he's just hat superseding trick the Master and using the Servant. <laughs> I know, right? Um... 
I've got this long, shiny so glass object that I'm going to use to pull the... things out of your back door. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then again, I, the taint is the same way in some ways of... The Dark One can allow you to use Sidean and not have the taint on you because it also comes from the Dark One. If you use Sidene in his in his name, if you will, and so it feels like those are actually just a couple of ways of saying a similar thing. We're getting echo now, Josh. What? We're getting echo. We're getting echo. Are we are we echoing now? Yeah. Whoa, I mean, they're shit. not hearing it in the Discord. Why are we echoing? Maybe they are. Oh, okay. Well, I'm saying are they're you guys not hearing I'm not me echo? Oh, okay. How about oh, this? We're hear... not hearing you echo. Jo Josh. We are hearing ourselves echo from you. Yeah, Josh, don't say anything for a second. And I'm going to, uh, unless you change something, okay, never mind. Because every time I talked, I could see, like, the green light pop up around you in Discord. Oh. Oh, I can hear it in the background. Yep, now a it seems bit. to be fixed. Maybe? I don't know. Whatever. Fix it's it in not post. actually bad enough. Okay. Anyway. I feel like these are just kind of two sides of the same coin, the saw and the taint, because both of them come out of the dark one and they're, they're basically the dark one punishing you for one or the other or allowing you for one or the other. Um, it's also interesting that again, there's gotta be something else that happens with Rand because unless what's actually occurring with Moradin Rand Randadin, as you've said, which I've heard Randadin. before and hate. Um, he has a single saw in the shape of a dragon's fang, which either means one of two things. Either most of the saw is gone, and then there's something weird going on with one saw left, or it's just all of the saw flex, like, coalesced into a single dragon's fang, which is also just as weird. Look, um, but again, so I definitely feel like this is actually evidence, not conclusion, but evidence for it being hybrid because Moradin's body should be fucked. And when Rand jumps into it, it kind of is because it's definitely still got a saw 100%. But at the same time, it's not as bad. And Rand doesn't talk about actually feeling like specific ill effects, though I will also say it's Rand and he walks around for most of the book series with no hand, a dagger wound on his side that's covering a spear wound that's also in his side, basically not complaining about any of that. But also... He, he briefly had Saw himself like, as well. He as doesn't Rand. mention anything about it at the end. He briefly had Saw himself as well, as just Rand. Yes. Correct. When, yeah. Also true. But Which his is, is like the only case of like, his his Saw worked more like herpes. There was a flare up and then nobody could tell. Well, but one thing about, remember, one thing about Rand's ability to access the true source, it came... As a result, was of that it was dragged out of the someone else? soul bonding with Moradin. Rand was never granted access to that by the Dark One. Mm. He gained access to that through Moradin. That's why Semarag was no. surprised as fuck when he used it against her, because she didn't know why Rand was given power. Why right Rand was given access to that power. He wasn't. Well, I mean, yeah. okay, that's... Uh, to me, I feel like that's a little bit of a technicality because... On it absolutely hand, like, is. That's I why don't... it was such a big No, 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 no. You're... No, Josh, you're misunderstanding where I'm saying the technicality is. Uh, I feel like... What do you feel like, Daniel? Tell Either me. Robert Jordan makes a mistake Tell me how or you makes feel. an oversight 
or Brandon makes an oversight, or the Dark One makes an oversight. Because oh, the there is good no one. good reason why the Dark One shouldn't actually take that ability away, even when they go ahead and have the soul bonding. Well, so I, I wonder if he if the dark one doesn't take it away out of design, because the whenever Rand does seize the true power through the link with Morden, uh, when he's confronting Cimarron, he describes it as being similar to draw, like the ecstasy and the addiction to being similar to drawing the one power through the Choden call, just by accessing this one source of power. So I could see the Dark One not shutting that off or or preventing Morden from one because he knows Morden's he, he already knows Morden is going to be his champion to defend him. Um because he like every like half of the people in this fucking series misplaced their faith in somebody that actually doesn't have their best interest at heart. Um well actually no Morden no no I retract that. He places his faith in Morden to defend him because Morden is the only one that actually does have a goal that aligns with the Dark One's own. Because Morden is just like, I'm fucking That's tired of this rebirth shit. Get rid of me. <laughs> and the Dark One's like, yeah, I'm trying to get rid of everyone. Let's <laughs> Bro, literally shit. what I'm trying to do. <laughs> yeah. So what better guy, what better person to have defending you than the only other Forsaken whose only real goal now is fucking end it all. Fucking like sweep over the emo hair, end my suffering. What's up, Daniel? So I found something uh, because I was actually really curious about this because I knew there was a reason that I felt very, very strongly about this. Mm -hmm. There is absolutely an unconfirmed uh, argument that Rand gets access to the true power through Morden. However, the much more accepted also unconfirmed let me be clear about that mm. but the much more accepted uh version of events is actually that the dark one does not like what semarag is doing and or uses the opportunity to plunge rand even further into madness because what the words in the passage say are rand suddenly senses a reservoir of power something alien and different and he reaches for it. Right. There is no hint of him reaching through Moradin or anything else. It suggests that the Dark One at that moment gives him the ability to touch the true power, which has nothing to do with Moradin and only to do with the Dark One handing him access. Okay. My evidence for this. Again, these are unconfirmed. I appreciate that, and I'm not mad at other people having other opinions, but that is why I felt so strongly about that one piece. You know, to so, add credit to it, not to interrupt you, Josh, um, which, a as I say this and interrupt you, I'm really sorry. Um, <laughs> if it was only, to, to, if it was only good, through, this is something else I just, uh, I just found or read or whatever, or pieced together with this kind of conversation, if it was only through Morden and everything that happened as a result, even the brief uh, presence of the Saw was only through Morden, Nynaeve probably wouldn't have noticed something wrong with Rand's eyes when she delved and healed him after he lost his hand in Knife of Dreams, which she does. She knows that there mm. appears to be something yeah. wrong with his eyes. Whether that's just a yeah. side effect of having touched it, however it came about, or... If because he was yeah. actually directly given access to punish Simarog, um, and then that well, and left this a residual is, effect or not. This is interesting because, of course, that is distinctly different than what happens in the last battle. Because from the description in the last battle, Moradin is channeling the true power at Rant. Mm -hmm. And Rand, through Kalindor, says... Thank you, motherfucker, and takes the true power from Mord. Right. So it's not the Dark One at that point act giving him access, because the Dark One absolutely doesn't want to have him to have access once he becomes Bodhisattva Rand. He absolutely <laughs> is like, I have fucked up. Now I need to kill this dick. Okay, like, doesn't he reference he's like absolutely in the camp of that? Doesn't but he reference he drags like pulling it out a ton? Of Moradin 
at that point. Doesn't he reference pulling he a does. ton of the true power through and he can feel the dark mm-hmm. one trying to clamp it off? Well, because oh, yeah. because Kalendor exactly. is a Sangreal for the true power, yes. Mm-hmm. But hold on, though. My oh, for evidence for everything. stating yeah. <laughs> that Morden... Ooh, that's a new question. Morden's, Morden and Rand's soul bonding is what gives Rand the ability to touch it in the first place. Mm, it's the same reason that Rand is able to appear to Morden in a dream shard, and Morden is surprised not be possible. Well, okay. They well, share. Also, I, I never watched that. those. You're questions. absolutely. <laughs> I hear what you're saying, and I absolutely appreciate that. But there are so many other reasons that that could be happening. Because, of course, again, Andrel has no soul bond with anybody else, and yet he channels in a dream shard and gets them out. There's no good it, reason other than. Brandon Sanderson and or Robert Jordan and or whoever ended up putting it in the notes that this special thing happens this one time. Like, I get what you're saying and I hear it and I'm not throwing it completely away, but I am saying that there are weird things that are going on throughout all of the books that don't necessarily specifically oh, well, tie to we, Morden and Rand being connected. That's that. Well, no, no, <laughs> no, they are specifically connected. That is confirmed. I, I, I'm not disagreeing with that being true, but it doesn't necessarily explain everything between Morden and Rand as, oh, they're connected, which is why this is happening. Because then other people shouldn't be able to do other things that are similar without being soul bonded to somebody like that. But like, does that make sense? But there's no other instance of soul bonding. Wait, wait, some of, Antro, but that's what I'm Antro saying. Doesn't, Antro doesn't. Unless I'm remembering horribly wrong, he doesn't channel in a dream shard. He channels where the dream spike is, which you shouldn't be able to do because that blocks off. A dream off shard is okay. different than right. Teleram Riyadh. A dream, dream shard, shard is you're right. 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 I, again, my point still stands as far as people who don't have that thing going on. Agreed. Because again, Josh, you're exactly right, and that feels like I, I'm not saying like told you so or anything, but it feels like that actually adds to my point. Is that my point is not that no one should be al- allowed to do things and the story is bad or that there are mistakes being made or anything like that. But I am saying that attributing weird things going on between Rand and Morden specifically to the soul bond sort of glosses over lots of other people who don't have a soul bond doing things that also should be equally as impossible and just going ahead and say, oh, well, the reason that Rand and Morden can do that is because they're so bad. Is glossing over all of those other times other people do things they shouldn't be allowed to do without a soul bond. There, does so that make sense? When does that happen? Because I can't That's what I, I was just going to say. One. Well, no, again, I the, the, the I, example I, I with the dream with the spike. Idea. I'm talking about like the example with the dream spike. Andrel should not be able to channel in a dream spike. Yeah, he is. There but is no reason given as far as is. why, like, yeah, he's not dream, soul bonded. The dream shards, Maybe he's it, not whatever. The dream shards are pocket dimensions, like vacuoles that are tied to the creator of that vacuole or dream shard. Right. Sure. So the link between Rand and Morden explains why Rand was even able to find or access it, perhaps because of that link to the. But creator. that's what I'm saying. But Andrel, but, but no, Andrel's Andrel's ability to uh, to channel and open a gateway while inside of an area covered by a dream spike. Um, I always felt tied to his talent in creating gateways. Yes, because even sure. then he creates but, an incredibly small one. Well, but you. But my point here is not that impossible things shouldn't be explainable or that you can't find reasons. What I'm saying is the only explanation for it should not Mm -hmm. be immediately X. Because since other people throughout the series do things that other people say should not be possible, which which is one of the reasons... Does not mean that every explanation for what Rand and Moradin do that shouldn't be possible... Is that they're connected? You know, do you understand what Wait, I, I mean? Hear what by you're that? It's, yeah, it's yeah, a logical no, no, no. fallacy I, I to assume saying. that the same thing that caused this caused everything else. 
Exactly. Here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I agree with you. Right? We, 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 and we've had this discussion where, you know, is the Wheel of Time a hard magic system or a soft magic system? And initially, everybody will say hard magic. But then we dive into it a little bit and we go, it's a hard magic system. This rule exists. Oh, except for when this happens. Or except for when this happens. Or except for when this happens. See, I actually disagree with that question already. Because the answer is, the Wheel of Time is absolutely hard magic. It is not. But you can't ever expect... Yes, it is. It is a hard magic system that no one understands. Okay. Which is why okay. it looks soft. Because there are absolutely hard rules. Sure. You just don't get them all. Because sure. more rain saying, this is a rule does not actually mean that magic has that rule. It's just that Moraine thinks it does. It, well, and, and that's my point, is that that's a little bit of a fallacy to ask whether it's a hard magic system or a soft magic the, system. It's the, the general story that we get though. told, it's, it's, because there's it's the so statement. much unreliable narrator it, it, that just because people are wrong doesn't mean it's not a hard yeah, magic yeah, yes, system. I, it I just means that. that you can't trust it. Right. I'm saying as a general statement, as, as a general statement. I'm hearing statement. what you're saying. And I, again, and the I, thing I, is, the thing is, the reason why we will be talking about the Wheel of Time 50 years from now <laughs> is because there are no clear cut definitive answers. And I'd be willing to bet that many of them died with Robert Jordan himself. Many of them live on in Harriet and in Maria. Maria still to this day confirms theories at Jordan Con and at WatCon and mm -hmm. which is why you should be at them and eventually should. at the Gathering Madness which is why you should also be at that actually the Gathering uh, Madness I also is agree. Gathering Madness if you're ready for the others that's true that's, fair. that's a good like point uh, so the Gathering Madness is happening October 13th, 14th, and 15th we're kicking off the taintiest convention in existence on Friday the 13th Come get some. You know you want some. Go to our website, blacktowerpod.com. And, oh, 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 before we wrap this up, we've got some responsatrilites to take care of. Res responsatrilites. Responsatrilites. <laughs> Andrew, you've no. got an illustrious, melodious voice. I want you to read out this next section in high chant. Well, what I'm going to get said here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you didn't say which continent's high chant, <laughs> now, did you? Yeah. Sean Chan's high chant. Sean Chan's high chant. Sean, Sean Chan's Chan high chant. Y'all better get in there. Sean Chan high chant. <laughs> We're going to go right Sean over here, right here. Y'all is cooking in Sean Chan. To the saloon here. And say, welcome to the rank of dedicated <laughs> to Harmony. Welcome. Congratulations on the promotion. We thank you very much for being around here and gracing <laughs> us here at Parsonage with your presence. And your dedication has been noted. Also, noting their dedication to the cause that is this here Black Tower podcast. We got Danielle. Thank you so much. We recognize your contributions and your hard work and your effort. And I don't know where this accent's going to end up. I'm sure somewhere in like <laughs> I Europe. Was gonna say, kind of I love that it went from, you know, the the like kind of Texan kind of general Southern to just Southern gentlemen from South Georgia. Yeah. A Andrew transported himself as Colonel Angus. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now you see, we, we, got, we, got the channel. we got small here oh, man. to show our respect for as mama and if would I like overstay my welcome, them. just now, tap me now on the I head. Say, now, now, now I say, now I say, boys, now, now I say, not, 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 we can't now be say, forgetting, <laughs> now you're we can't be forgetting our kin, our kinfolk, yeah, our no, family, our the family chat, members bro. that travel with us here to the Black Tower to learn, to train, to feed. To just enjoy the wine. And here we got Cat C, who has become a member of that family here at the Black Tower. Of oh, that family. This fine family is better for having you here. 
Um, and now, now you're starting to get into this. Is just great. I love everything going all over the place. Right this is so multicultural fun. within a very niche culture as it is. We have a very, <laughs> very special. I'm multi southern. Yeah, multi southern. All right. Now we have a very special thank you to go out to Lisa S for earning, heartedly earning, and suffering through the crucible of the fire and the flames and the gnats and the mosquitoes down here in the in the swamp area or oh, attaining the My rank of ass. asha man <laughs> welcome to the rank of asha man and uh you know they're, they're they're still a member of our family and we love and appreciate all our family and some family they just they support you a little more than they have to to be part of your family. And so last but certainly not least, Knuckles Mustache, we thank you for helping your family out with a little more support than you have to. We hope that you're getting everything that you hoped you would get for from this. And now here I am hoping that before I go to sleep tonight, I can stop talking like this. Because I'm kind of <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Good luck with that, bro. You know, honestly, the worst is, like, you will. I promise. But the oh, worst yeah, is, like, fun. when you start going ahead and doing a voice, like, out loud or in your head for a while, and you start to realize that your thoughts are in that accent. Because I shit you not, half the time I think... My accent of my thoughts is Australian, and it's very off-putting. <laughs> Just saying. So Tells don't. Joke. So when you get stuck in that Southern gentleman, and you start thinking in Southern gentleman, did right. it's it's all over, bro. <laughs> it reminds me of the joke of uh, my dog ate two pieces of twine, and whenever he took a shit, they came out tied together. I shit you not. <laughs> Yep. I like it. But yes, to I all like it, of the individuals that have uh, joined the Black Tower family, uh, for all of those that have been promoted, that have increased your incredibly generous and incredibly uh, useful support for us, because again, everything that comes in through whatever medium we have uh, for the podcast goes straight back into the podcast, whether it's uh, doing Ooh. stickers or sending out different merch, buying the envelopes for it, stamps, all that kind of stuff. It all goes straight back into the podcast. So we cannot thank you enough for your continued patronage and support of what we do here. Um, mm -hmm. I, for here, legal here. reasons, I must say that uh, it may or may not help buy booze for Black Tower events. Look, the Watt Tail Cocktail Contest oh, it is absolutely a thing. Does. Why okay? would anybody be mad at that? Yeah, 100%. I mean, I don't know. Ain't I know a certain group that governs that. uh we that are governs who we booze are. that frequently gets mad about something they shouldn't be mad about. So. I mean, mean, all right, guys. Uh, it was so fine a second ago. That, now it's thank not. You again. What the heck? Right. Right. Thanks, patrons, for being there. Thanks, patrons, for being awesome. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just throw it to my final thoughts here about this particular topic, as well as just patronage and Black Tower and all of that in general. I will make it quick. Uh, I'm firmly hybrid camp. In fact, I actually think it's probably more soul than body uh, as far as where the taint is. Um, I just think everybody gets washed clean once they... Uh, once their soul returns to the pool. Um, and I also do contrary to what Andrew said. And, and again, I absolutely relish his opinion. Um, but I, I actually think that <laughs> if the problem, maybe one day you'll both, if the you. problem is caused by the dark one, I actually think that he does have the ability to uh, remove or squeegee the soul of his effects. Squeegee. I don't think that he has the ability to squeegee the soul of other things that he has nothing to do with, but since he squeegee can me, give oh, daddy. dominance of the, or it can give, uh, you know, control of the true power, can also protect from the taint and things like that, I absolutely uh, think that he could squeegee the soul of his own influence. Um, and so definitely I think that 
it's actually more soul than body, <laughs> though the body is clearly affected by a the soul's shit. Um, especially because there's such a through line in the books of previous souls affecting, <laughs> like previous lives affecting your current one. Um, and so I definitely feel like there's a strong suggestion that the soul also affects your current body, whether it be your memories, whether it be your knowledge, whether it be whatever. Which is also one of the reasons I feel like Nynaeve finding Black Tar in the brain, if you will, also just makes so much sense on, like, every level. I just, thought, um, I just thought of Nynaeve going through, is like, so bad. Because I feel I like... I thought of Nynaeve going through Elaine's shit and finding a bag of, like, black tar heroin. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> 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 this is how we keep steady in Andor! <laughs> yeah, right? You don't, need, the, you don't need no bag. You got drug. black tar heroin. <laughs> um, tell, but yeah. Tell me, Nynaeve, have, have, have you ever there embraced Sider while doing heroin? <laughs> <laughs> you, ever, do you ever embrace side air? Ever embrace side air on weed? Hey, uh, you ever embrace side air while getting your butthole licked? No, okay. Hey, thanks for joining us. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for being. You gotta do final thoughts there, Josh. What do you guys? Oh, do final thoughts. There you go. That's that's the end of my final thoughts. I think it lies more in the soul than the body, but I do absolutely <laughs> think that it's a, more of a hybrid. And as part of the evidence of that, I feel like uh, Rand having more and more intricate taint than anybody else, because he's also melded so much with Luz Theron, actually makes a lot of sense, given that Luz Theron was there when the taint happened. So there you go. That's my final thoughts. Boom. Roasted. Everybody else go. <laughs> Boom. Roasted. Better than bomb roasted, I guess. Ha! Got him. Uh, I guess my final thoughts. Uh, I'm going to stay and remain in the camp of uh, the taint resides in the body and it affects the the body. Um, I am going to cite how the saw works between the bodies of Ishi and Morden as I assume it to be. Again, there's no concrete proof that the Dark One resets the how much true power have you used. How much have you suckled from my true power teat switch or not? I believe he does. Mm. Um, so I'm going to I'm gonna assume that the Dark One stuff works much in the same metric as that. That he can filter it out and that if he resurrects you, he can uh, reset it uh, amongst his people that he resurrects. But um, uh, I believe whenever Nynaeve says that she sees it poking into the brain... That what she is seeing is it actually poking into the brain um, using the the true power or some other taint mechanism of the dark one. I'm pretty sure it's probably true true power, uh, which would also explain taint, why taint. Ishmael was so able was able to so easily heal the madness from Luz Theron. Uh, if they were born of the same thing, um, then that would be why Lou like why Ishi could just be like gone. Just kidding. I used it to remove itself. Uh, you know, the floor is made of floor. So, uh, I love that's where I'm going to go with that. Yes, the floor is made of floor. Yes. Um, that's where I'm going to go. Fully in the body causes effects that affect the mood and the mind um, rather than the soul. So, that's it. Partially yeah, just because I want a hat trick and partially just because I feel like being an obstinate bastard, I'm going to go with hybrid. Hybrid effect. He would. It's going to affect the body, it's going to affect the mind, <laughs> and therefore it resides in the body and in the mind, and that's all i got to say about it. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being epic. Thanks for being <laughs> the best I don't know which of us won, Daniel. Listeners. I don't know if you pulled him into neutrality, if I pulled him closer to body. Or both. I no, got, he, I if he fingers, was actually going to be obstinate, he would have had to say only... Yeah, only, well, only soul was where he was at the start. Now he's, now he's middle of the road. I don't know if you pulled him into moderate or if I pulled him closer to body or both. Wherever you are out there! I, I feel like the effect is the same and therefore it's basically just the taint. We hope you <laughs> have enjoyed this episode. <laughs> we have. We hope you smiled. We hope you cried. We hope you feel no. better. We hope that 
you're just a little bit more insane than you were when you first started listening. We thank you for tuning in for this week's Dose of Taint. We love to give you that taint. And you love to receive it. Don't lie. You know you do. From all of us here at the Black Tower, my name is Josh. I'm your sword of on I will stab a motherfucker in the face with some lightning. In game. But not in a gay way. Maybe in a gay way. I don't know. Who knows? You never know. Where did any of Someone that... Someone stop talking! I, I, I don't judge. I absolutely don't judge, but also what the fuck just happened? I am your slowly backing away by Jean Mahal. Andrew. <laughs> and I am your... What? Where's my banner? I'm in Con Mahal, Daniel. And from all of us here at the Black Tower Podcast, thank you for being here. Uh, thanks again to all of our new Patreons uh, and also for all of our changed patrons. You are the glue that holds us together. You are the wind beneath our wings. You are the peanut butter to our jelly. And we cannot thank you enough. Um, from all of us here at the Black Tower Podcast, uh, have a lovely rest of your morning. And in case we don't see you again, Good afternoon, good evening, and good jelly. Wait, fuck, good night. <laughs> Governor doesn't come and took my banner. <laughs> So much trouble just fitting in.